Now anytime you hear any gemstone being referred to as imperial, just know that the reference is to the color and means that color is like that of imperial topaz. Imperial topaz was the original imperial stone. And this is because back in the 17th century, imperial topaz was being mined in Russia and the Russian czars claimed exclusive rights to all topaz stones being mined in Russia with peach or peach orangish or golden color. Topaz of these colors became known as imperial topaz. Later, garnets and zircons displaying the same colors became known as imperial garnet and imperial zircon. Now, zircon is not a very well-known gemstone. Zircon's problem is with its name. Many people confuse zircon with cubic zirconium, or CZ, which is a lab-created imitation for diamonds. Zircon is not CZ. Zircon is a natural gemstone which has an amazingly high refractive index of around 1.8 or 1.9, much higher than that of almost all other colored gemstones. Zircons, when properly cut, sparkle almost as brilliantly as diamonds. Zircon occurs in a wide range of colors including yellow, orange, red, green, blue, violet, brown, and everything in between. Many zircon stones are completely untreated. However, some brown zircons found in Southeast Asia are heated to produce a blue zircon. Zircon is the official birthstone for people born in December. Zircon is a very underpriced gemstone. I think one reason that the price of zircon is so reasonable is due to the confusion over the name. The good news is that the bad luck with the naming results in an excellent value for money to the customer. Now when cutting zircon, you have to be careful when heating the stone because if there's any cleavage, heat can cause the cleavage to run and damage the stone. Now when I was looking at this stone, I did not see any cleavage issues, so I think we're going to be okay. The other consideration with zircon is that it's a double refractive stone. With this double refraction or bifringence, you're actually looking at only one facet line, but because of how the light is being bent in the stone, your eyes see two lines. It can look a little bit blurry inside. This is Imperial Zircon, and it's been mounted onto the uh, top. Now it's kind of a rectangular shape, and we're going to cut it into a hybrid design square Portuguese, a square cheese it's called. So we're going to put it in so that the narrow side of the rectangle is set up in the dot. So we're going to grind off the long side because there's some inclusions and we're going to turn it into a square. So we've got our master lap down which just uh, adds, adds a base, basically a base plate to our uh, topper rough kit. This is a 320 topper. They're pretty much disposable. Now we put a sponge in back here because we've got our drip pan pulled down so it doesn't interfere with our mast. And if we didn't have a sponge, the water would kind of shoot everywhere. We bring it down, short side is 96 index and the other side is the 48 index. So the four angles we're interested in in the, in the preforming is the 96, the 24, the 48 and the 72. I'm going to go to a 1200 crystal light solid steel disc, which already doesn't need the master lap packing. And what we're going to do is start cutting the stone. Uh, we'll get rid of any of the scratches that occurred with our rough 320 grit. Set it up so it's flush against the stone. Okay, our stone is now a square just over six millimeter, which is perfect, because we're gonna grind it down and, and pre-polish it to six millimeter, so we'll have a perfectly calibrated six millimeter square cheese when we're done.
We're almost done with the pavilion or the bottom half of our Imperial Zircon. We've got the bat lap ready to go. Again, I'm charging it with uh, 60,000 grit diamond. But I wanted to show you how we do that. The diamond is in the compound and it looks like lipstick. So mix it all into the uh, bat lap. And at this point, I'm not adding any water until I get it going. And then I'll add a slow drip of water. Now this diamond grit, you can either use water or you can spray your lap with liquid wrench or WD-40 and use oil. Either one will work. I prefer water and the reason is when I'm checking the facet after I've cut it, if I, if I use the WD-40, it's hard to wipe the oil off. Set up the angle, make sure we're in the right index. Paper towels work great to wipe the water off, but when I'm in the final polish, actually the, uh, the blue paper towels that you get at Home Depot or Lowe's for shops, they're lint free or more lint free. So they're actually better so you don't see those lines of lint that you think are scratches in your stone and they're not. So if you've got a very good pre-polish, then it's very quick to polish. So the way we transfer our Imperial Zircon is we get the top with a concave, the cone shape, which is going to fit right in there. Clean uh, both the top and the stone with a little bit of alcohol, just regular denatured alcohol that you get from uh, Lowe's or Home Depot would be fine. Uh, usually my go-to adhesive is uh, two-part epoxy, however when the stone is this small, I'll use uh, super glue. So then we put the, uh, the brass tops in the uh, transfer jig, make sure they line up, which they always should, unless there's a problem with your machine. Tighten up the bottom part where the cone is. A Loctite 404 is what I use for super glue. You just need one drop, push the stone down, and just kind of move it around until the super glue sets up in a couple of seconds. And then you let it sit until it dries and then you can remove the other side, which I'll show you how to do. We're ready to cut the, uh, the top part of our Imperial Zircon. With the Ultratech, their dops, they're aligned, they have a 45 degree angle cut and it's also cut in the uh, index. So that means when you cut the one side and you transfer it, it should fit right into the dop and line up because of that 45 degree angle right there. So the way we check it to make sure that our 96 index is correct is we set the angle for 90 degrees, which makes it flat, and we run it down on top of this uh, the black adapter, little piece of flat metal. When the stone touches it, it's straight across, exactly lined up. If not, we can manually adjust it. Lock the dop in place with our Allen wrench. Check at a different angle, just to be sure. And we're ready to start cutting the uh, crown. I think uh, we'll use a 600 from high tech. There's not that much rough to be moved. The angle we're going to use for the crown is uh, 42 degrees. So we just dial that in. That will ensure a hard stop at uh, 42 degrees. So all of these facets that we're going to cut will be lined up just right. And we're ready to start preforming the top. We finished polishing the uh, crown of our Imperial Zircon. Uh, we, we have the top left, the uh, table left to cut to and polish. So we're setting up to uh, cut the table, the last step. We need it to be flat, 90 degrees. So we set up our Ultratech at 45 degrees. And we use our table adapter, which is another 45. And the two together will give us 90 degrees. This is our table aligner to make sure we're flat at 90 degrees. Put our stone and dot in our table adapter. Tighten them up. And as long as we're at 45 degrees, we have a perfectly flat table. I think I'll start with a 1200 crystal light. Got to check often to make sure we don't overcut because we've got step cuts and we want to eyeball on them so all the step cuts are about even. 
finished uh, polishing the table. I had a little bit of trouble with the uh, 14,000 uh, diamond grit lap. Usually it does great, but for some reason it just wasn't polishing, it was throwing scratches. So what came to the rescue was our Delight Lightning Laps. Uh, 50, this is 50,000 diamond grit embedded in a, in a topper from uh, lightninglap.com. I need to soak this in acetone to get the uh, adhesive off and then weigh it, measure it, take a look at it, it's already sparkling, and send it off to Poppy.